This is Disneyland News Today. I'm Tom Corliss, and here now are the top Disneyland Resort stories for February 2nd, 2023. Of course, the 100 Years of Wonder celebration kicked off last Friday at the Disneyland Resort, and we were there to cover it all. So if you'd like to watch in full Wondrous Journeys, the brand new and critically acclaimed, might I add, fireworks show at Disneyland Park, we have three separate videos, one of it from It's a Small World, one with the projections on Main Street, and another one uh, from the hub in front of the castle. We, of course, also have video of the brand new nighttime spectacular at Disney California Adventure World of Color 1, uh, as well, on Friday, Runaway Railway, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, opened officially in Toontown. We have a great video of that for you to watch. And uh, tons of coverage, both on the site and here on YouTube, of everything else, including the special cavalcade that's happening daily, reviews of all the food and drinks that are available. We have pictures of all the special uh, food and drink novelty items you can buy at the park, a full tour of the G uh, Disney Gallery's new exhibit, a look at all the brand new character costumes for the celebration, and as well, a in-depth look with prices at all of the merchandise collections, including the very popular Disney Eras collection, including that fantastic lamp. I just had to buy the water tower lamp. It's really, really great. So be sure to check out all, our cover, uh, all of our coverage. There's tons of videos here on YouTube. There's a bunch of posts at DisneylandNewsCity.com. If you want to know anything and everything about uh, what's going on this year during this event, uh, you'll want to check all that out. It was a rough night for the cartoon concession stand inside Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway just a few days ago. Some of the neon letters of the concession stand uh, sign had burnt out, and at this point in time, as of today, uh, they're all just completely out now. Uh, they decided to turn them all off for the time being. Uh, the worst thing we saw, though, was that someone had ripped off the pepper shaker. One of the many pepper shakers that's on the counters there had been ripped clean off. According to a, a guest who wrote to us on Instagram, they said that a child had broken the shaker off while moving through the queue, and a cast member was able to retrieve it. Uh, it was reinstalled the next day, but... Uh, you know, again, a beautiful queue and just a few days in already, already having some problems. Of course, we did a in-depth Tom's Honest review of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disney on which you can watch right here on the channel. Taking a page from the former Disney store, Disneyland Resort is celebrating the Disney 100th event with commemorative cast member name tags, which allow them to share their favorite character in place of their hometown. We, of course, have been seeing these all over the park, but the Orange County Register, citing Disneyland Resort officials, released a list of the 10 most chosen characters. So this is a list of the 10 characters who were picked the most by cast members to be on those name tags. Number one, Stitch. I know our, our producer Jake's very happy back there in the booth that Stitch was the number one choice. That's, that's pretty big. Uh, number two was Tinkerbell. Number three, Spider-Man. Number four was Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Number five, Wally. Six was Mickey Mouse. Seven was Belle. Eight was Darth Vader. Nine, Donald Duck. And at 10, The Scarlet Witch. Cast members who did not choose a character were given Mickey Mouse by default. That's worth noting. It's probably a big part of why he's, I mean, he probably would have made the list anyway, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe he wouldn't have if it wasn't the default one either. Also worth noting, two of those characters are, for, are from Marvel, one is from Star Wars, and the rest from Disney properties. The only Pixar entry is Wally, which is surprising, given it's uh, not really the most marketed uh, Pixar movie of all time. It's one of my personal favorites, but um, pretty, pretty interesting list. I'm pretty surprised by a lot of those. Also, as part of the celebration, a series of Disney 100 banners were hung throughout the Disneyland Resort. It's in the tram route, uh, if you enter from Harbor Boulevard, throughout downtown Disney. And these honorary banners feature uh, the years that certain things were created uh, related to the Walt Disney Company, whether it's movies, attractions, etc. You may remember a couple weeks ago when they first went up, several of them had mistakes on them. Well, Disney has been very diligent and has been replacing the mistake banners as of late. Let's talk about what they've fixed. First of all, the biggest offender for most people was the Matterhorn Bobsleds banner, which said the attraction opened with the park in 1955. It, of course, did not. It was replaced with the corrected 1959 opening year. For the Magic Kingdom, you may remember they had missed the space between Disney and World. They had made it one word. That has been fixed as well. For the Disney Cruise Line, it originally featured the year that the Disney Cruise Line brand was introduced of 1995, but that's not the year that the first Disney Cruise Line ship set sail. That was actually 1998, and they have indeed corrected it to that. I know a number of people want, uh, tried to correct us on Twitter the day we talked about that one, um, and my, my reasoning was, 
you know, when you, you have the opening of Disney World, Paris, Hong Kong, Shanghai, all of those, it's the year it opened and not the year it was announced, right? Um, so for Cruise Line, it should be the year it opened to guests. And so they've, they have fixed that to align with that. Then, of course, there was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which originally displayed 1939, which under any circumstances would be wrong, by the way, because in 1937, the premiere was held, and in 1938, it hit theaters around the world. So they missed both of those years. Either would have been correct, uh, but now they've put that 1937 date on there. So uh, good on Disneyland for fixing all of these. It's unclear if they're going to fix that uh, little sign under the Mickey statue in Town Square. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacation Here, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical Disney trip. The best part is their services are free. Visit www.travel for details. TikTok user The Nostalgic Latino shared a video this week of another guest at Disneyland with a sparkling firework taking pictures in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. The firework was on top of a Mickey-inspired cake, and as the guest poses, a guest services cast member in the plaid jacket walks by and stops them while on the phone asking for security. As listed in the official Disneyland Resort rules, fireworks or other similarly explosive and or flammable objects, smoke machines or fog machines are prohibited. Who would have guessed? <laughs> but yeah, so this is not allowed, by the way. Of course, guest behavior the last couple of years has gotten so egregious that Disneyland Resort added a courtesy reminder on their Know Before You Go page. Last summer, the Anaheim Police Department responded to calls regarding assault, arson, vandalism, brandishing a firearm, and more. And in October, two guests even jumped into the water at Grizzly Peak, uh, at Disney California Adventure, reportedly to retrieve a lost item. But this is, uh, this is someone doing it for the brand, quote unquote. Um, a good friend of ours took to Twitter the other day, retweeted this and said something is, this is why they don't really enjoy these celebration days at Disneyland. So this happened on the Friday, the 27th, the kickoff of the 100th. And so for this person's Instagram or TikTok or whatever, they decided this was what they needed to do was take a cute picture with a sparkling firework in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. Um, and their comment, our friend's comment was, this is, this is kind of what these kickoff days have become. They're not so much about the place or the actual celebration. They're becoming about people's brands. It's a day to go, you know, uh, promote your brand. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of that stuff. I'm really, I'm really not. And I know, I know we technically have a brand, but our focus here is always on the park itself. That's what we're there for. That's what you want to see. And so, um, and that's what a lot of these stories end up being, right? There's so many people that have done stuff simply for TikTok or Instagram or whatever platform to gain an audience, right? There was the, the guy that was drinking the water out of the fountains at Disney Springs. There was the guy surfing um, in the fountain at Disney Springs. And I know at Disneyland, there's, there's way more of an influencer culture than even um, in Florida. So um, people don't, you know, it, it's fine to want to do your own personal social media and do stuff, but... None of it should ever lead you to, you know, impacting another guest day, doing something against the park rules, jumping into places you shouldn't go. Don't, please don't do any of that. You know, go, go grow your brand in any way that doesn't put other guests or yourself in harm, please. After hearing from the upset fans of the Disneyland All-American College Band, Disney announced they will restart the program after announcing just a couple days ago it was going on an indefinite hiatus. The hiatus announcement was made on January 27th, you know, as to be buried under all the Disney 100 news. But on January 29th, Disneyland announced that a project team had been reestablished to help relaunch the All-American College Band program. Disneyland officials stated, quote, innovation and change are part of the fabric of the Disneyland Resort. With the relaunch of the All-American College Band program, we remain committed to offering educational experiences that embrace the ever-evolving educational landscape of colleges and universities across the country, while continuing to reflect the magical and memorable experiences that are uniquely Disney. The Disneyland All-American College Band was suspended due to COVID in 2020, the year of its 50th anniversary, but did return in 2022. Each year, 21 members of the band are chosen from over 300 applicants from the United States colleges, and the band performs on Main Street USA in the summer. It is, uh, it is a staple of Disneyland. It is, uh, sometimes I feel like it's a main reason I book a trip to Disneyland in the summer, because these kids are always so incredibly talented. They are fantastic. They were so, these kids were so good that it made them change the Disneyland band and the way they perform. Remember, that was a big controversial thing uh, a couple years ago, I think, for Disneyland 60th. They updated the band, 
and people are up in arms, but I was like, the, the college band's been a better act for many, many years now. And it is, again, it's become one of those staples that I think is not replaceable. It has to remain. And I'm glad uh, management at Disneyland came to their senses and reinstated it because I, I, I legitimately, and I know there are many people, especially the local audience who will make trips just to go like go eat dinner and watch the college band. And that's their whole visit to the park. Um, and that, that sounds like a great visit to me. Inside the Opera House at Disneyland, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln tells the story of our 16th president and is a timeless classic champion by Walt Disney himself. But this year, in honor of Black History Month, the story will be expanded to honor American hero and abolitionist Frederick Douglass and his relationship with Abraham Lincoln in a new pre-show and interpretive display. Abraham Lincoln's friendship with abolitionist and social reformer Frederick Douglass will be the main focus of the attraction's new pre-show, which debuted on February 1st, the first day of Black History Month, and is set to continue indefinitely. Nearby in the Opera House displays pay tribute to prominent figures in American history, and among these historic figures is a new installation honoring Frederick Douglass, a great leader in our nation's fight against slavery. It took leaders like Douglass to help guide Lincoln in his fight to end slavery, and a bust and letter declaring Douglass a free man are now part of the new collection. A new portrait of Douglas has also been added near the exit of the attraction. The painting features the distinguished abolitionist posed before an American flag in the background. Uh, earlier in the week, a sign announcing the debut of the upcoming pre-show stood in the Opera House. Of course, the pre-show has since debuted. You can watch it right here on our channel if you'd like to see uh, how it turned out. But this is, uh, this is a very cool thing. This is a neat change. I'm always happy when they invest money into great moments with Mr. Lincoln. It's a fantastic attraction, a great piece of Disney history. And uh, this is a really thoughtful way to be inclusive and in a way that, that ties so beautifully into an existing uh, show. It's really well done. The price for Savi's workshop hand-built lightsaber experience has been unexpectedly lowered at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland Park. The original price for the experience was $199.99, but this was progressively increased to $249.99. It has now been lowered back down to $219.99. However, the experience at Disney's Hollywood Studios is still $249.99. Oh, Disney World charging more for something? I'm, I'm shocked. Totally shocked. The price for the Droid Depot experience has also been reduced. The Droid Depot experience lets, lets guests assemble an astromech in their choice of R-series, B-series, or C-series models. The experience has, had been raised to $119.99, but has now been reduced to the original price of $99.99. Again, the price remains at $119.99 at the Walt Disney World Resort. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members who make this show happen every week. And many of you I got to meet at the opening of Runaway Railway. Thanks for being WIGS members. While the one and only Mickey Mouse is sure seeing a lot of love for the Disney 100 celebration, including in the food, there's love going around to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit as well. Uh, over at Disney California Adventure, they've decided Oswald is the center of the celebration, and he's the center of a new confectionery available at the park as well. The new candy apple features a chocolate coating, it's dark chocolate actually, on a whole apple with white chocolate icing to create his head shape uh, and darker chocolate for his eyes, nose, and mouth. The two towering ears are made of crisped rice, you know, Rice Krispie Treat. Uh, we, found, we found the fortunate hair immortalized as a candy apple at Trolley Treats in Disney California Adventure. That is the only place he is available. Uh, he won't be available elsewhere. Supposedly the Candy Palace at Disneyland will have a corresponding Steamboat Willie Mickey candy apple, but it has not arrived just yet. But uh, how cute is this? It's also delicious, by the way. We actually bought it and ate it, and I, I loved it. And I'm not a big candy apple guy. This is the first one I'm putting the stamp of approval on. Speaking of rabbits, the celebration of the Year of the Rabbit has kicked off with Lunar New Year 2023 Festival at California Adventure. We have gathered all the entertainment, the food, the merchandise for you in this year's full guide to the festival, which is available at DisneylandNewsToday.com. So if you want to know what we thought of every food item, watch the incredible Hurry Home pre-show uh, for World of Color, etc. Uh, go check out that post. It's all in one place for you. Nearly three years after its last meal was served, construction curtains have been put in place outside the site of the former Steakhouse 55 at the Disneyland Hotel, indicating a replacement may be on the way, or maybe just fixing it up for a reopening. Who knows? Even though they said it was 
permanent closure. Who knows what's happening? As the Disneyland Hotel was reopening to the public in July of 2021, Disney announced the permanent closure of its signature dining experience. While the replacement has not yet been announced, it appears construction or something is about to begin finally. Steakhouse 55, which brandished the 55 in honor of the opening of Disneyland Park that year, has been closed since 2020 when it was shut due to COVID-19. Disney has not elaborated on the cause of the closure or what the restaurant uh, replacement will be, as we said before. Either way, a sign outside of the steakhouse stands in front of black construction curtains and reads, Imagineering in Progress. While again, that replacement is not announced, we're hopeful uh, that we will get an announcement soon. We just want the return of Steakhouse 55. A little remodeling would be great. It, it, it was starting to look a little dated for sure. Um, but this is, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I went with my parents who did uh, actual my, my birthday dinner at Steakhouse 55. It is one of the most memorable Disney meals I've ever had. It was so great. We had such a good time. Um, and this, this, this resort needs a signature dining establishment. It needs to have one. And especially with a whole new tower of guests coming in, there's going to be a need for more dining as well. So uh, I'm glad something's happening and I hope it will be a great signature offering like Steakhouse was. Or, or I, I actually just hope it's just a remodeled Steakhouse 55. For the absolute latest Disneyland news, head on over to DisneylandNewsToday.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of Disneyland News Today or Charlie's Food Reviews. I know we just did a Disney 100 one, uh, which you, sh you should go check out if you want to try any of those uh, cool-looking snacks and treats. For DLNT, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Deep in the Plus. Each week, join host Rob Whiteside as he and a panel of Disney superfans take a different movie or TV show from the Disney Plus catalog. They'll tell you its history, details, and give their review, so you'll know if it's worth your time. Current shows, classic movies, and everything in between. Watch Deep in the Plus live Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern for new episodes. Or catch Deep in the Plus anytime on YouTube on WDWNT-TV.